Hello everyone, it is LB3 Point Man, and I am back again with another draft profile video. Once again, these are made to support of SB Nation and Cincy Jungle, so a big thanks to them. This is my fifth draft profile, so if this is the first one you're watching, be sure to check out the first four on my channel. Now let's take a look at a player that consistently shined throughout college, despite a long career that actually started as a true freshman. That player is Washington running back, Miles Gaskin. I still remember the first time when I watched Gaskin, and it actually is a bit sentimental for me because the first time I watched him was when I was making my first ever draft profile video, which was for Washington wide receiver John Ross. I remember loving whenever Gaskin got the handoff, and that love for Gaskin's game has continued all the way to now when he is finally in the draft himself. While he has never been considered a top prospect, Gaskin is a player that I think will be a pleasant surprise for whatever NFL team drafts him as long as he gets an opportunity. Now let's take a look at Gaskin's athleticism to kick this off. Miles Gaskin is a smaller back, but he has some bulk, which is good as there was some concern that he would come into the combine around 190, so seeing him come in over 200 is definitely one of the more pleasant surprises of the combine. He had a good college dominator rating, getting a large share of Washington's ground game every year. He ran an average 40 yard dash that when you factor in his height and weight for the speed score does drop to slightly below average. His burst and, uh, burst and agility are both around average also, so overall he does come out as a fairly average athlete which for a smaller back is less than ideal as you'd rather see them test higher athletically since they're smaller. Now I don't put any stock into bench personally, but the higher number is interesting as it likely means he spends a lot of time in the gym and is dedicated to his fitness. I do have the question of whether he may have bulked up for the combine and lost a little athleticism, but overall I think his athletic profile is neither something to knock him as a prospect or something for him to hang his hat on. Now, moving on to the tape study for Gaskin, I'd like to start off with a strength that ties into athleticism. He has the speed to get the edge on run plays, which basically means that he, on outside runs like toss and stretch and outside zone, he is fairly consistently able to beat the defender to the sideline and get up the field. I believe that not only does he have the speed to get the edge, he also has the lateral quickness to cut back on those same outside runs. Looking at this play, we can see Gaskin receive the handoff against Ohio State, and he's able to beat the linebacker to the edge and make the play a gain, when for slower backs it could have been a loss. Moving on to a weakness that I don't have any video to go along with, Gaskin's had over 1,000 touches during his college career. 1,010 touches to be exact. 250 touches a season is nothing to laugh at, and while he was able to stay relatively healthy during his college career, having a player come into the pros with so much wear already is always a concern, especially when Gaskin had his least efficient season in his final season in college. Although I believe that could be attributed to his worse usage in the passing game and the Huskies' worse overall offense compared to previous years. Despite the wear and tear, seeing college production is always a nice route to helping project college players, and Gaskin had nearly 6,000 yards and 62 total touchdowns. Next, I would like to talk about one of the biggest strengths, which is his fantastic lateral agility. The basic gist of what that means is that he is able to move side to side very quickly and without losing too much speed going forward. It is partially dependent on scheme, but in schemes where it is necessary for a running back to diagnose the hole and quickly get to it, side to side mobility is very important. This also helps Gaskin a lot in the open field and in the second level, as it makes him very slippery and very tough to bring down for defenders. Looking at this place, we can cut back to the right towards the hole and quickly get through and then push back to the left to avoid defenders and get that little extra bit of yardage for the first down. Moving on to another weakness is his blocking ability. Now, I don't want anyone to take this as me knocking his blocking effort. He always seems to at least try, which is more than you can say for some players. However, at 5'9 and just a shade over 200 pounds, he shouldn't be anything more than a speed bump for most pass rushers, which admittedly is all a quarterback needs sometimes. But he's just never going to be some great running back blocker. What, which, if he's in during passing situations, and he's not running routes anyway, that's a bad call. Just taking a look at this play quickly, the pass gets out quickly, but Gaskin got toasted by the pass rusher, and Brian is not far out from being killed, despite Gaskin getting in the way temporarily. So the next strength is something that I will admit should be, isn't really that helpful, but it's a fun tidbit that I thought what I would at least touch on. In an effort to get Jake Browning off the field, the Huskies would a couple times a game, it seemed, line up Gaskin in the Wildcat formation. This seems to suggest if you want a player that can run the occasional trick play for you, then maybe Gaskin is that guy. Or if you just want a quarterback that's better than Jake Browning, then he can be that guy as well. Here's his fun little play where he takes the snap and throws it up for the easy touchdown. Moving on to the next weakness, and it is his size. Despite being fairly thick for his size, Gaskin is still going to struggle mightily trying to win with power in the NFL, despite occasionally doing it in college. In the pros, he's pretty much strictly a speed agility back which isn't necessarily a bad thing as he is very good at that aspect. What it really just means is if the defender is able to make solid contact, he likely won't be getting many extra yards. If we look at this play, we can see that he is mad at the line of scrimmage and is just unable to go any further. 
The next strength that I would like to talk about is his ability to find and explode through the hole in the running game. In a reading react rushing scheme, he will be an exceptional fit as he is great at getting skinny through the offensive line and generally has very good balance in decision making. This is one of the most important traits for a running back as it can help the back maximize the yards blocked for them by the offensive line. This first play is at an angle I love to watch running backs from. We can see him receive the ball in the handoff to the left and come back to the right without losing any, any speed and easily get through the opening hole. Looking at the second play, we will see what looks like a lost cause the defense is collapsing around him, but he's able to get skinny through the hole for the first down. Finally, I would like to talk about one of the most mystifying parts of his usage and his profile overall. That is his receiving usage. Miles Gaskin is a very good receiving back that had solid yards per reception across the second and third season. And then in his final season, it absolutely cratered. And in all honesty, this largely seemed to be due to his usage, as he was strictly being used on obvious behind the lines, line of scrimmage throws, whereas before he got the occasional downfield pass that he was able to capitalize on. No matter what, he runs good routes and has good hands, and will be a passing game weapon for a good offensive coordinator. Looking at this play, he beats the linebacker on the wheel route, and then has to adjust to the underthrown pass by Browning, and he just makes a spectacular toe-tapping sideline catch. Even more impressive for a running back. Now it is time to talk my overall thoughts. So much of the argument about running backs can center around their value relative to others. However, I do believe some running backs are better at maximizing the yards blocked for them, and I believe that Gaskin can do that. I also believe he has the ability to be a deadly weapon in the passing game, which can be very valuable. He will likely end up going on day three and is the perfect pack back to be picked by a team that either wants to add to a committee or wants to lighten to the thunder they already possess. Teams like the Bengals, Cowboys, Rams, or Falcons could all benefit by bringing him into the fold. Now getting on to my comparison, this player is near and dear to my heart. It is Cincinnati Bengals running back Giovanni Bernard. Both are smaller running backs with good decisiveness that play bigger than they are, and they're both good weapons in the passing game. Now to wrap up, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who watched. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and put in the comments what other players you'd like me to do, and if there's any interest in continued videos after the draft. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed yourself and learned something new.